Here's the rotary encoder that we've been experimenting with. I've mounted it on this little piece of perf board to make it easy to manipulate. These pins here allow me to hook it up to my pet Arduino with a ribbon cable. We can rotate it left and right. We can press it down and we can double click it. Stick around and I'll show you how we can use all these features to manipulate menus, change values, toggle features on and off, and enter data. Here's a quick overview of the setup for this demonstration. Over here is my pet Arduino. It's running the code for this demonstration. It's being powered by this USB cable. Part of the output from the Arduino goes to this LCD panel. And of course, I'm using a rotary encoder as our input device. The Arduino is also hooked up to the input of this electronic keyer. It's a heat kit that I built about 25 years ago. The keyer keys the transmitter on my amateur radio. An electronic keyer is one of the ways we can send Morse code over amateur radio. This little project gives me a new way to send code. In this project, I use two menu styles. The first uses the Arduino string class, which allows me to edit and parse the text that appears on the screen. I move up and down through the menu by rotating the knob left and right. I switch to the command menu by pushing the knob in when I'm on this menu item. This is a simpler technique which uses a string of characters separated by the digits 0 through 9. I can return to send mode by clicking the knob when this item is selected. I'll dial up some text I want to send and then press the knob again. Notice the two colons you see on this menu item. They're like the symbols you use for repeats in sheet music. I've programmed my pet Arduino to send the text between those two colons twice if I double-click my knob. Let's take a closer look at the command menu. I'll turn my dial and select command mode and switch over to that menu. For programming purposes I've set up a boolean variable CMD mode for keeping track of which of the two main menus I'm in. When we're in command mode this value will be true. I've set up an interrupt to call the function knob to turn whenever I twist the dial. Knob turn checks the state of our two encoder pins. I do a little trick here to turn their values into a simple two-digit binary number. If the state is zero, we bail out of here right away. That's a key bounce. For now, let's skip a few of these if statements and find out what happens when we're actually in a menu mode. Encoder is a global variable that counts up when we turn our knob clockwise, and it counts down when we turn our knob counterclockwise. Our menus work like a Rolodex. If you turn your knob past the last item, it starts again at the beginning. It works the same way, going in the opposite direction. These two lines handle that rollover for us. I'm using two variables. One is knob min, and the other is knob max. 
their values are determined by whichever menu or menu item we have selected. If we're in command mode, we jump to another function called show command box. Now we're going to make use of this special string of characters that we set up at the beginning of the program. Look closely at these characters. I've embedded the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 9 right into the string itself. My function show command box sets up two variables, one called start string and one called stop string. Notice that both of these use the value of our encoder. Start string adds the number 48 to it. Stop string adds the number 49. Why the number 48? Well, let's look at a table of the ASCII codes. Decimal 48 is the ASCII code for the character 0. By adding 48 to the value of our encoder, we end up with the ASCII code of any number that it represents. Adding 49 gives us the ASCII code of the next number. Next, we set up the variable i as a pointer to the characters in our string. Let's say you've dialed up item number 2 in our menu. 2 plus 48 is 50. This while loop waltzes through our string until it finds a character with the ASCII code of 50. That's our number 2. Now a second while loop does the same, this time looking for a character with the ASCII code of 51. Unlike the first loop, this loop prints the characters on the LCD as it waltzes along. The 2 and the 3 don't get printed, but all the characters in between them do. This also means, however, that I can't use digits in any of the text of my menu items. Now let's see how we select an item. Let's change the speed of our code. I'll dial it up and press the knob. My pet Arduino knows we're in command mode, so it uses the value of the encoder to determine that we want to change the speed. It sets the value of a Boolean variable, speed mode, to true, so that when we get into our function that handles the twisting of the knob, it stops here and follows these instructions instead of changing the menu. Now let's try sending it 25 words a minute. Our send menu makes use of the Arduino string class. If you look at the language reference page on the Arduino site, you'll see that they list string twice, once with a lowercase s and once with a capital S. String with a capital S defines an object and with it comes a wealth of functions that allows us to manipulate strings in many ways. As you can see, I've packed a lot of strings into this array, maybe too many. The Arduino reference page cautions us that the string class uses a lot more memory than a traditional string character array. I've had to trim my list down and use some abbreviations in order to make things work. And I need to trim it down some more. I'm noticing some odd characters and weird things that appear after I've bounced around through my project a little bit. We've got variables that are colliding in here. I'm really pushing the little Atmega chip to its limits. You've probably noticed that each of my lines begins with either the letter P or the letter I. Those characters never appear on the screen. The P tells my Arduino to pause the idle mode if I have it turned on, and the I allows me to enable it again. We'll talk about idle mode later. You'll also notice that scattered throughout this text there are pound signs and dollar signs. These are tokens that I use to tell Arduino where I would like to have the other station's call sign inserted, or his name. 
I'm able to do this by taking advantage of some of the special functions that are only available in the string class. I'd like to draw your attention to this number here. You've seen me demonstrate it before. But what I'd like to show you now is that we can change a large number easily and have the new digits appear in the menu. Let me show you how that's done. We'll switch to command mode and then I'll dial up edit RST. If you want to manipulate a larger number, you can create a pointer and edit it one digit at a time. If we want an up arrow, we have to build our own. Here's how it's done. That's right, we've created another array. This time, it's 8 bytes. And we've depicted them here as binary numbers, which allows us to visualize the character that we want to create on our LCD screen. If you want to manipulate larger values one digit at a time, we need to have a way of keeping track of which one of the digits you're changing. To do that, I've set up this variable RST mode. I'll use it like the flag I use for the other modes, but this one is an integer, not Boolean. That means I can have more than two values. When we want to make a change, we call a function called setRST. The first time we get here, RST mode will be zero. So we'll clear off the screen and put a prompt on the top row. Then we'll move our cursor down to the second row and place it just before the spot where we want our arrow to appear. RST mode will help us get it in the right spot. We print a blank space here to remove the previous image of our arrow and our cursor moves over one more place. The next instruction puts that arrow that we created right where we want it. And finally, we increment RST mode for the next pass. Our interrupt handler changes the numbers up or down depending on which way we turn the knob. When we push the knob, we come back here and get set up for the next digit. When RST mode equals 4, we know we're done, so we put it back to 0, switch from command mode to send mode, and then put a prompt on the screen. Now here's the cool part. When we twist our knob in the send mode and come back to the RST item, the new value is stored at the menu. Your Arduino project might require a simple way to toggle a feature on or off. Let's see how we do that. You shouldn't be surprised when I tell you it's done with a Boolean variable. This one I call idle mode. When the value of encoder tells me that I've got the idle mode item selected on my menu, I toggle the value of that Boolean variable from true to false or false to true every time I press the knob. Boolean values are really easy to toggle. Take a look at this line here. You see that exclamation mark here? The exclamation mark means not. So if you were to read this line out loud, you'd say idle mode equals not idle mode. And if idle mode is true, what we're saying is idle mode equals not true. And of course, not true means false. And the next time we push the button, idle mode is false, and we make it not false. That's true. Now for my last example. This one's my favorite. Have you ever created an application where you wanted to enter text into your Arduino project? Let's take a moment to watch this short clip. Then we'll come back and look at it much deeper. The last interface I want to show you 
is this one that I've created so that you can enter text. If you're working on a project where maybe you'd like to be able to enter characters into your Arduino, maybe like get the name of a person who just got the highest score, this might be exactly what you're looking for. I've set up two lines of text to choose from, and I've set up a little arrow cursor. Notice how it flips up and down as I reverse the direction of my turn. If I turn it further, it slides along in the same direction that I turn the knob. If I turn it the other direction, it reverses and comes back. Now we can enter text. Let's say I want to put in the name Peter. I start by rolling over to the letter P and press my knob. Now slide over and get the E. Now slide over above the T then one click in the opposite direction will point it down. Now come over to pick up the E. A little flip, get the E. I can come over here and dial up the R. And finally, X over here would exit the program and save the name. However, if I go clear over to the opposite side, this little O would cancel my entry, and whatever name was in there before would be restored. And finally, at this end, I've included a backup arrow so that I could remove characters if I need to do that. I won't bore you with all the details on how that was done, but I hope it does give you some ideas on what you might be able to do with some of your projects. Well, we've looked at a lot of different ways we can input data into our Arduino projects using Rotary and Clojure. But let me warn you, I think I overdid it on this project. Many of these ideas are good and maybe some of them will be useful for you. But trying to do it all in one project like this may be just a little bit too much. This project has been a great exercise in experimenting with different ways to create an Arduino interface. But how successful is it really? as an amateur radio application? On a scale of 1 to 10, well, let's see. I could give it a 4. But let's see what you can do. If you come up with something, please share it with us. Well, that's it for now. This is Bud Churchward, WB7FHC, saying 73s. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.